Hey guys, in today's video we're going to talk about the Civivi Elementum pocket knife. We're going to quickly go over some of its specs, I'm going to share my general impressions of it, and then I'm going to compare it directly to a couple other folders for everyday carry that I have used so that we can see how this stacks up as an everyday carry knife because that's what this style is marketed toward. So quick rundown of the specs. It's 2.96 inches, uh, the blade, which is nice. It's just under that three inch mark, makes it legal in a lot of areas where that's the cutoff point. Uh, overall length, just under seven inches. It's got a G10 handle with a nice tactile feel. Uh, it's lightweight for a knife. I think it weighs in at just 2.89 ounces, which is less than half the weight of the last knife that I was carrying in my pocket all the time, which I'll get into shortly. It does feature a liner lock, which feels very snug to me. There's no play in the blade coming up. There's no left and right play in it at all. It feels very solid, which I really like about the knife. Uh, it features D2 steel, which admittedly I have very little experience with in knives. Most of the other knives I've had have been other steels, but I did do a considerable amount of reading for this review so I could speak on it a little bit. To summarize, the consensus a lot of people give in forums for knives seems to be that D2 doesn't have quite the same corrosion resistance as some of the other stainless steels, but it does take an edge. Uh, it takes a little more effort, they say, to put a good edge on it, but it holds an edge a lot better than other steels, and I can certainly attest to that. Uh, one of the first things I did with this knife was go into my garage and start cutting open boxes and then just basically push cutting down the sides of it. Not all the knives I've had before push cut really well. Sometimes I've had to saw a little bit. This one just bid, did basically just glide right down it. And I just take the same box and cut it into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces to simulate you know, a whole bunch of different days worth of light box opening. I even had a house project after that where we were assembling a crib and a, uh, a dresser. So there were a whole bunch of boxes that I had to cut down very small after that project to fit in our recycle bin. Um, so it was a, a really substantial amount of cardboard cutting that I did with this right off the bat. About halfway through that process, uh, I noticed that it, it wasn't, you know, shaving sharp anymore. The cutting was definitely taking a toll on the blade like you would expect, but it was still very functionally sharp. And it just a, l a little bit of stropping it against a piece of leather about the halfway point seemed to, I mean, it didn't make it shaving sharp again, but it, it did restore the edge enough that I was once again able to push cut through the second batch of uh, cardboard, which was really nice. Um, other knives I've had do not retain that well. Some of the knives, uh, which is part of why I stopped carrying them every day, even though I liked them otherwise, they just, when you put them through something rugged like that, where you're really pushing a lot of arm into it and really just getting into it, and you're not doing light tasks like just cutting open a box or cutting open a little piece of plastic, uh, the edge just doesn't hold up. So I'm really impressed with this D2, what it's able to do at this price point. So first knife I want to compare this to because it struck me the minute I, I laid it down and saw the blade opened, it reminds me of one of my very first everyday carry knives that I purchased many years ago, which is the Kershaw Skyline. I've had this sitting in a box for a while and this hasn't been lubricated so it doesn't flip open quite as easy as it used to. It will if I put a little wrist into it. But anyway, put it down here you can see somewhat similar concept with the handle. The uh, finger guard you know, that comes from the flipper being flipped around, similar, it's a little more severe uh, on the skyline. But the blade itself, you can see that the general shape of it looks very similar. They're about the same length. The curvature is very similar. The belly on them is, is pretty similar. It's a little more belly on the Civivi. Um, the spine up here, very similar shape and depth. Um, I'm not saying that the Civivi is derivative of it or anything. I'm just, it reminded me of it. And, and that's a good thing. I liked the blade of the Skyline, and so it was reassuring when I saw that on the Civivi. It reminded me of the old days. And a couple things that I like better about the Civivi is the Skyline is very light, which is nice, but they accomplish that partially by, you can see that there's only liner on the one side where the lock is. There's not liner on the other side. So on this end, you only have the G10 as your handle, which I've never had a problem when I used this knife with it cracking or not holding up to use, but it doesn't feel as substantial in the hand, and I'm not sure that I would want to use a knife like this for the heavier duty uh, tasks that I sometimes have gotten into, you know, that this feels a lot more rugged in the hand because of things like that. Um, the, the lack of play in the blade, I mean, there is a little wiggle 
in the skyline. I just don't feel like it holds it as tight. Maybe I could torque wrench this tighter and that would help it a little bit, but this just feels off the bat like a much more solid knife um, than the skyline. The other one that up until recently I was carrying was the SOG Vulcan Mini. Um, this has a little flipper. It also doesn't open. You have to put a little wrist action into it. So none of these open, you know, as simply as the Civivi. Like I said, when you put enough force with your finger to do it, you notice I don't have to do any wrist action at all to get that to pop right open on all of these other knives. If I put that same amount of finger pressure into it, that's what you get. So you've got to do a little wrist to get it to do it. Now this one, of course, does have the finger bump so that you could just pull it out that way as well. Um, that's a little more similar to if you've had Spyderco knives, what you might be used to doing with it. I like most things about this knife. I generally don't like Tonto style blades, but this one, because of the belly on it, you know, I found that it was a much more usable thing. But this blade, it just didn't seem to hold an edge nearly as well. And what made me eventually stop carrying it was it just felt like even just cutting open some boxes, the next time I would go to use this Tonto edge, it just didn't have that razor sharpness anymore. And it was real disappointing how quickly that seemed to become an issue. And the other thing that uh, didn't strike me as an issue when I very first got the knife, but over time carrying it did is when it sits in the pocket, every time I reach my hand in it, or if I'm ever like hanging out somewhere and I'm gonna like just have my hands in my pocket. And it also makes this part right here because of where it sits, stick out, and that part is really uncomfortable. The hand always ends up resting like on this, that it's kind of sharp and it just, it's not something I thought of initially, but it's uncomfortable. I think part of the value of the, how hard you have to push this with your finger, um, which at first disappointed me a little bit, but I see the value in it is, when this is locked, if you just grab the blade and try to pull, it's actually pretty hard to get it to come out of this, which is a good safety feature because it means when you're carrying it upside down in your pocket like this with the clip, it's way less likely that this is gonna open up in your pocket so that when you put your hand down in your pocket, you're gonna slice your fingers, which on this knife, because the blade comes out very easily and it wants you to carry it like this, I have a couple of times had it be open in my pocket and when I reach down, I cut my finger. Very big learning experience that I definitely am a lot more cautious with this knife as I put my finger in, like you feel here to make sure you can still feel the blade before going the rest of the way in. Um, but it's always nice not to have a knife that you even have to worry about that. And I just find this deep carry pocket clip superior. Um, it, I mean, it sticks out just about as far, but it doesn't have this stupid thing right here that covers the tip that is uncomfortable. This is just a nice rounded, very smooth edge. And so if you're resting your hand in your pocket next to the knife, it's not uncomfortable at all. It feels good. I think those are big wins for this knife. Um, it is comfortable in the hand. It's comfortable to just carry like this. It fits in the hand well. I mean, if you had really large hands, maybe you'd want a little bit bigger handle, but uh, I feel like you could get a good grip around it when it's open. Um, it does a lot, you know, the finger guard here is, is really good and comfortable. I like the, the choil there. It feels good with the thumb to get some stuff. And you can even with this groove, some people have talked about putting your finger up here to have more fine control. That is true. I do feel that you have a lot more control over where the tip goes when you hold it like this. But I personally would be a little nervous about my finger going up onto the blade doing that. So for my usage, I would pretty much only ever hold it like this or kind of like that uh, as I'm cutting things. But it does have a good feel in the hand. The curvature is really ergonomic and comfortable. It doesn't bite in. And I like the fact that, I don't know if you could tell on the camera here, where they have the inner liner bump out, there's actually a small bevel that goes into, like it's lower, where it goes into the G10. That's nice because it makes the edges of this not feel sharp in your hand. Um, it's kind of a rounded, experience that's comfortable up here. Some knives that don't do that end up, I mean, even with the skyline to a degree, because it's very square on the edges. And so when you're holding it, I mean, it's not really uncomfortable, but it's not as comfortable as this. Um, so at the price point, I think this is a lot of knife for your money. It does seem to hold up really well for a lot of tasks. So this would be a good all around pocket knife where, you know, you're not in a position where you say, 
this knife will work as long as I'm doing really light tasks, but if I got to get into cutting plastic or cutting, you know, heavy cardboard or stuff, this isn't going to do it anymore. I think this would do a good job of cutting heavy things. If you needed to cut through bottles, if you needed to cut really light cans open, this would probably do it. Um, it did a great job with cardboard and twine. Uh, I cut rope with it after cutting the cardboard. It still went right through that really well. We cut sheet fabric um, to do some different things. It did a good job of that, a better job than um, the other pocket carry knife that I had, the Vulcan Mini. And so I just, you know, I, it's not a perfect knife. I mean, there are things that maybe I would do differently, um, such as it would be nice if this clip were reversible. I have switched to carrying the knife in my right pocket to accommodate this. I normally would carry my knife in the left pocket. It would have been nice to be able to put it on the other side to do that. Um, but it works really well <clears throat> in the right side. And one thing that since carrying in the right side, I have noticed that's a benefit It is I mentioned the lack of tendency this has to want to open, which is good, but carrying it in your right pocket where this is the front of your pocket, then the edge of your pocket is right here. So even if it wanted to open, it can't really open, you know, very far into your pocket. So that is an advantage of carrying it the way that the clip is facing versus trying to carry it the other way. It's a nice looking knife. It comes in a variety of colors. I do like that it has a lanyard hole here. I don't generally carry my knives on lanyards, but I just think it's nice that that's included, that you could do that if you wanted to clip this onto a backpack or something like that. And I also like that the way that they designed it, having the lanyard hole doesn't make something bump out or protrude that would go into your hand. Because where this is, if you were gripping it tight, it would be like cutting into your palm. Not the case here, and it feels good. And I like how smooth it just opens up. Although, you know, in mixed company, you probably don't want to flip it open too hard because people get nervous with that kind of stuff sometimes. But I think it's a good all-around knife. I've been happy with it so far. And I'm, I'm really happy with the fact that cutting all the heavy-duty cardboard and the other stuff that I did, uh, it, it did seem to beat on the blade a bit. But after I took a sponge to it and um scrubbed it down it did retain its nice shiny mirror finish there's no noticeable scratches in the blade after all of that and i was certainly harder on this knife in the first week of having it than i generally am on my knives in general just to see about the toughness of this steel um, edge retention is great and like i said i didn't really have too hard of a time sharpening it um, after i did a couple of rounds of cardboard i Took it to my whetstone on about the 4,000 um, grit side of it. And I put, I would say, probably about the same amount of time into it that I would my other knives. And it did seem to take a nice sharp edge again. Um, it's not quite shaving sharp the way I have it now. I could certainly make it shaving sharp with a little more time on the stone. But this is back to a very functional edge again that would definitely push cut right through cardboard. It didn't take very long. Um, so it might take longer than some steels to put an edge on, but I... Not in my experience, not a whole lot more. Not not so much more that that should be a thing that discourages you from this knife. Like, oh no, it's going to be really hard to take an edge. Uh, maybe some of the people that have said that weren't using whetstones; they were using some other method of sharpening. I don't know, but my experience was this wasn't too hard to, to take an edge, and I really like how long it holds an edge. It's probably one of the best knives that I have in my personal collection currently, uh, as far as holding an edge. Um, admittedly, I don't have a whole lot of like one and two hundred dollar knives. Um, some people hearing this probably would cite off a whole bunch of examples of knives that hold an edge extremely well, but of the fifty ish dollar range knives, I am impressed at the combination of features that this has with the handle, um, the liner quality on the inside. Like I said, there's zero play in the blade. That just makes this feel like a really well built knife, and I really like the steel now that I've had a chance to use it, and so. This will probably be my new everyday uh, knife for the foreseeable future until I try something else. So hope this was helpful for you guys. Uh, if you're looking at knives and you're considering a new one for your collection at this price point, um, again, it's the Civivi Elemental. And feel free to ask me questions uh, in the comments if I didn't cover something or if there's something else I can talk about at a little bit more length. Otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next video.